Okay guys, here's our next installment or segment for our video series for uh, Unit 7, Chemical Reactions. Um, our next major step here is to take a look at the five different types of chemical reactions and how do we predict what is going to be made when we put two or three things together in the chemical reaction. So the overall goal over the next few days is to be able to take two reactants, one reactant, three reactants, and just by knowing what is a reactant, be able to tell me what is going to be made from that reaction, okay? Because of different styles and different types of reactions that we can, we can find, okay? So there's five different types of reactions. We're going to cover one of those types today, uh, which is called a synthesis reaction, also known as a combination reaction, okay? So two different terms for this reaction. Uh, I usually call it a combination reaction. Uh, some textbooks or online sources were also called a synthesis reaction. Uh, they mean the exact same thing. Okay, so if you take a look on the screen here, we notice that our general form for the, this type of reaction is A plus B gives you AB. Okay, where A is any single element, B is any single element, and basically what you do is you just combine them or you synthesize them. So A plus B gives you AB. An example we have for that is aluminum plus chlorine. Now notice how chlorine here is a diatomic. Uh, a diatomic can be considered one of our single reactants. Okay, so as we take a look at these two, we say here is a single, here's a single thing, so they must make a compound. Okay, as we go through our different uh, reaction types, you have to be able to identify them. So for each reaction type, we're going to have a way to identify it. So for a combination reaction, the key thing to look for is, do I have two single reactants? And a single reactant means not a compound or just a single element. Um, diatomics are included in that. Okay, so when we take aluminum, we add it to chlorine. We really only can get one thing from that. We get aluminum chloride, AlCl3. Now notice how chlorine over here, we have two of them. But over here, we have three. Okay, one of the key things we're working with predicting products and making products of a reaction is you never carry over the subscripts. So we have two chlorines here because it's a diatomic. We have three chlorines here because of aluminum's charge compared to chlorine's charge. Okay. Um, let's take a look at uh, an example of this besides this one and we'll work our way through it. So here we go. So let's say we have magnesium and we're going to react magnesium with oxygen. Probably use magnesium solid. We use oxygen, probably in this gas state, to do this reaction. So a typical problem with this, I would give you this and say you react magnesium with oxygen. Finish the equation or tell me what you're going to make. Well, we have a single element here. We have a single element here. So the only thing that can happen here is to combine those two together. So magnesium will combine with oxygen. So on the product side, we write down magnesium oxide. Now, when magnesium bonds to oxygen, here's one of our key things. You need to have a neutral compound. Okay? So we have to charge balance. Okay? So whenever you write a product, you need to first make sure that what you're putting in the product is charge balanced or that this is the actual right way to do magnesium oxide. Once you've done that, then you can go back and balance the entire equation. So let's do that now. Magnesium is a 2 plus charge. Oxygen is a 2 minus charge. So if we have a 2 plus charge and a 2 minus charge, that does make um, the proper equation for magnesium oxide. All right. This is something that we did in our last unit, the whole mastery test thing. So this is something that you should be able to do continually throughout this whole next unit. Because if you don't do that, you're going to get all these wrong. Okay? So we have magnesium, we have oxygen. That makes the correct substance. We erase our charges. And we erase this. Magnesium oxide from this will be a solid. And again, the only way you would know this is if you actually did the experiment. Okay, so uh, what we'll be doing in class is we may actually be running this experiment in class for you guys. Um, because we made a solid, we put a little S there, and then now we look at our equation to make sure that we balance the equation to finish it. Well, I have one magnesium and one magnesium, so we're good, but I have two oxygens. So I want to double my magnesium oxide, 
which requires me to double my magnesiums out front. Okay, so we now have an example of solving for a combination reaction. There are two special cases that we need to keep in mind or memorize or learn for combination reactions. And there are two cases where you're going to find compounds put together to make another compound, okay? So our general rule is two single reactants. However, if you see a metal oxide, okay, plus water, anytime you see that, that should kind of trigger a red flag in your brain saying, wait a minute, this is something special, okay? Now, for me, if water is a reactant, that usually tells you something goofy is going on. Because water isn't typically one of our reactants in chemistry. Uh, usually it's there as a dissolver or as a, as a solute or solvent, but it really isn't a reactant very often. So when you see water as a reactant, that should kind of flip a thing in your brain saying, wait a minute, something weird is here, something different is here. So if we look, the case that we have, which are two special cases, if you have a metal oxide, here we have calcium oxide, plus water, if you put those two together, what happens is that calcium oxide, when it gets in contact with the water, it actually changes it to a metal hydroxide, okay? So this is the way that we can produce or create a base in solution, basically, is what we're talking about. So calcium oxide is our example, but really any metal here would work. It could be sodium oxide, lithium oxide, aluminum oxide. Any oxide added to water will give you a metal hydroxide. Again, calcium is just our example. You could put any metal cation here to make that happen. Second special case, same idea, same process, but instead of having a metal oxide, we have a non-metal oxide. So sulfur is a non-metal, so we have sulfur trioxide gas here. You mix sulfur trioxide gas with water, you get sulfuric acid, or H2SO4. This process right here, a non-metal oxide with water, that's the primary component that makes acid rain. Um, we let off CO2 gas, uh, NO3 gas, SO2 gas, SO3 gas. We let off some from our industrial processes are these different non-metal oxide gases. And when they get into our atmosphere, sometimes they combine with water. And that combination, we form these solutions of acid and we get acid rain from that. So this process here is actually pretty important to our environment because of that generation of acid rain. Okay. So non-metal oxide, our example here was sulfur, combining with water will give us our acid. Now the acid you always make is always going to be the acid based off your polyatomic ion, the A-T-E ending. So you're going to end up making sulfate or sulfuric acid or nitrate or nitric acid or uh, chlorate or chloric acid, those kind of things. Notice how the, from the sulfur we get the sulfate ion. So the acid you make is from the ATE ending, so sulfate, chlorate, those kind of things, okay? So we need to be able to predict our products. So if I give you two things, you should be able to tell me what it makes, and then you need to remember to, to charge balance your product to make sure the compound is correct, and then once you have that done, then you balance the entire equation. Uh, we have two special cases that we have to learn, and make sure we understand those as we move forward. Okay, guys, that is it for this segment. Uh, we'll continue a different segment for every different reaction type as we go through until we get all five reaction types done. Thank you.